drum roll here for number 100. And it is Sergeant Slaughter. He came in with 49 points. JC gave him the most love. He was number 52 on JC's list. And what a way to start us off here. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter, at least from my deepest memories of Sergeant Slaughter, has got to be WrestleMania 7 and all of that, all of that build uh, with Hogan. But um, let's say you guys, what do you guys, uh, what do you guys think about old Sergeant Slaughter? Yeah, I, I I think so, too. I mean, that guy had to be sweating bullets over that Iraqi turn, man. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how much money they paid him to do that. It had to be a ridiculous amount of money. But just the fact that you're just walking around with a target on your back after being so pro-America for all those years and going up against Hogan and get at Mania, they flipped it. You know, they flipped the belt to him um, at the Rumble that year to, to make to set up the the uh, the Hogan match of Mania, which was, uh, you know, it was not a great time in the uh, in the industry at that point. Yeah, and I, uh, you know, with with that Hogan and Slaughter match, interesting that Slaughter makes this list because I, uh, growing up, had a handful of VHS tapes that were the, um, do you remember the, and you wouldn't, John, because you weren't born yet, but uh, Andretti, do you remember the um, the compilation VHSs that you would get, the Coliseum video ones? Oh, absolutely. Um, and so one of mine was WrestleMania's Greatest Moments, and I watched a thousand times um, Hulk Hogan giving Slaughter the leg drop with that Iraqi flag draped over top of him or whatever. Um, and I didn't see that that mania live. You know, that was a year before that I started to really, really get secondhand tapes and everything. Um, but that that memory is huge for me. Uh, the Sergeant Slaughter Hasbro that was one of you know, that was one of my initial, my initial, uh, you know, probably 20, 30 guys that formed the Fed. Um, and the uh, the one thing about Sergeant Slaughter is that I always coveted the G.I. Joe. Uh, and even though I wasn't a G.I. Joe collector, um, because he was a wrestler, that my friends that had it, I was always uber, uber jealous of it. Um, and so... Kudos to him for being a you know, culture icon in that sense, man. You had the cartoon, you had the the um, you know that that GI Joe figure is great, uh, and then he was able to, you know, after that whole Iraqi, uh, what what was the face turn? What Matt was that a was it was it before that eight man tag or was it after the eight man tag? I remember I specifically remember him being a huge baby face in an eight man tag that might have been it might have been like a SummerSlam. I don't think it was a Survivor Series, but he, so you know what it had to, the turn had to be before then because he was on a team with like Tito Santana and like everybody that was as white meat as they come. Virgil, I almost guarantee you, Virgil's on that team. Uh, and so you know those are my my young Sergeant Slaughter memories. And then character work, man. Look, dude, he was great as a commish. He was. He was great. And I absolutely loved him being in that Stooge Brigade. So you know, good on him for all that. And I, th I think too, just a, it's such a, it's such an iconic character when you think about that golden era of the '80s with with WWF. Um, I mean, hats off to that guy, man. I mean, for, he really, he really created such a long time memorable character that almost everybody knows who Sergeant Slaughter is, right? I mean, he's got to be in the top 10. He's probably in the top 10 of, of people that everybody kind of knows who Sergeant Slaughter is. But, um, you know, he's a guy that had a figure in every major line, right? I mean, he had a uh, he had the LJN. He had the he had the Hasbro. He had the commissioner in the Bone Cruncher era. He had elites. I mean, that's a pretty impressive thing to do. Um, I mean, everybody, everybody remembers Everybody remembers the turn, right? The the the, the Iraqi turn. That's the first thing everybody's going to think of. But you know that that Rumble match in '91 um, with the Ultimate Warrior. I mean, on paper, it probably doesn't sound like the greatest match in the world. I mean, and look, it's not it's not a five star classic by any means. That match is better than people give it credit for. And, and I I do encourage people to go back and check that out. I found that eight man tag. It was WrestleMania eight, so it was the next year, and he teamed with Duggan. Virgil and the big boss man versus the nasty boys, the Mountie and the repo man. Oh my gosh. I hope all of them are on the rest. Of so as heel in his face as it could possibly be, not, not just that they turn slaughter face, 
they put him with the faciest faces versus the heeliest heels. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and, and I'm fairly certain that Sla Slaughter gets the win in that one. I might be mistaken, but I think that I think somebody gets the Cobra Clutch. I'm sure they did. Yeah. <laughs> and, if, if and, if, are... and if it wasn't the finish, it was after the bell. You know what I mean? They, yeah, he, gave, yeah. he gave him the old the old one after the bell to pop the crowd. Um, the um, if you if you're looking for a Sergeant Slaughter match, that's kind of when he was a baby face right in that era. He takes on the Iron Sheik uh, in a boot camp match. Um, in, in uh, June of 1984, and that match is on YouTube. And those guys kill each other. <laughs> it's very physical. There's blood. They're in there just beating the crap out of each other. Slaughter's bumping around. He's moving really well. I mean, it, it, you, people, people don't realize either. I mean, for him being a pretty big guy, that guy was pretty agile. He probably an underrated guy in terms of athleticism. So hats off to him, man. He had a he had an unbelievable career in the WWF and made a lot of money doing it in various roles, and it's it's pretty impressive. Great entrant into uh, the Podski, one hundred out hundred. Uh, doing a note really quick that his most famed match, I I believe is pre cutoff, but if it's not, it's close. Um, and I've never seen it, but I've heard a million things about it is that he has like a street fight or an alley fight or something against Pat Patterson. That's supposed to be the thing of legend. So maybe, maybe, maybe add that to your weekend watch list. Sure. I, I you know, I think that um, looking at that now, I haven't really been into figure collecting for a little while because we moved into a house and it's been, you know, expensive to do those things, <laughs> but you know, with the, uh, I, I really do think that the, the slaughter LJN in, in, in good condition is probably my grail piece at this point as a collector. And I, I can honestly say that. Yeah. I know the one thing I wanted to put over is the elite that came out or the ultimate that came out a couple years ago. That was the San Diego comic-con exclusive. Uh, I have that one in the collection. It's, it's one of the best, ultimates that they've ever done the only thing i wish that was different about it is that it had the double jointed elbows but i absolutely love that figure what a great character man just for the way he jumped into that role and, and just owned every second of it and made it feel like it was a real thing just awesome hats off to him man. yes dude he he owned it so much that he kayfabe the country into thinking that he actually was a drill yes. sergeant yes that's how great with no military right. service it's so good. It, it, that, that, that's that's the crazy part, is that people found out and he was, and he was like he was like almost disgraced by it. You know what I mean? Like you're in a fake industry, and he had to he had to be disgraced by by K. Fabin. The thing the thing about the thing about Slaughter Two Man is when you look at that golden age of the '80s with the WWF, they've got so many awesome defined different characters that are in that company at the same time. And for slaughter to, to still be one of those guys that stands out above almost everybody in people's memories and, and in pop culture is amazing. I absolutely agree. So when I was looking at my list and I was thinking of, you know, my tiers and where I could put people in these tiers, um, the easiest one was thinking of like the top guys, uh, Flair, Michaels, Hogan, Sting, uh, those sorts of things. And then you, you start to filter down and, you know, I, I obviously he's um, what kind of associated with Hogan, at least for my recollection of it. And I know he did some things before and, and had a uh, match with Warrior that was high profile, that sort of thing. Um, but you know, I, for me, I was thinking about it today in preparation for this and he, he's more of a cultural icon. He crossed over into other things and that was sort of bringing them back. Like he was with the GI Joes and he had a ton of merchandise with them and he had a ton of exposure and bringing them back to, you know, uh, WWF, WWE, um, so, and you think about the toys, like uh, that was the, the LJN and things like that. That was, so sort of that working, having enough of a background and being, you know, a, a good wrestler uh, for the era and a character, more importantly, especially when you think about the um, I want my country back and the turn and all that stuff. Um, 
but then also being sort of a cultural uh, driver as well and bringing eyes from other things. And I mean, you can even look at it today. He's still doing conventions. He's still signing. He's still a very big part of that wrestling lexicon um, of being Slaughter. Like, I mean, they even resurrected part of his gimmick to try and get Lacey Evans over. I mean, nothing was going to get her back over, but you know, whatever. Um, so I think in that regard, that's why he kind of made my list, that sort of overall impact um, and being a part of the wrestling lore and life. 